Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 8.3c, which is the last part of chapter 8. This video is about the control of the heartbeat, mainly the nervous pathways that go through the heart. Now, it's important to know that the cardiac muscles are myogenic. The contractions are not initiated by nervous impulses from the brain or the outside. The contraction is really initiated by the muscles itself within the heart. How is the cardiac cycle initiated and coordinated? So there is electrical impulses that passes through nervous systems, um, nervous pathways from the central atrial node to the atrial ventricular node to the parchyne tissue. So wait, again, what? A sinal atrial node. So it's in the atria, it's right here. Woo, look at it move. And the atrial ventricular node is right in the middle of the heart here between the atria and the ventricle. And then there's the Bacchine tissue, which is uh, here and here. So it needs to go through three parts in order for the heart to contract. So let's start with the sinal atrial node. What's going on here? Now the sinal atrial node is where the nervous impulses are initiated. And this is where uh, the rhythm of the heart is determined. And therefore it's called the pacemaker because it determines the pace of your heartbeat. So yeah, it's found the wall at the right atrium. So again, you are looking at somebody else's heart. So the left-hand side of the diagram is the right atrium. So at this point, yep, pacemaker. The sinal atrial node kind of sends out waves of excitations or electrical impulses. And these impulses spread across the atria, causing both atria to contract simultaneously. So this results in atrial systole, yay, we know this stuff. Now, the strange thing is that it doesn't spread to the ventricles, and that's because there is a non-conducting tissue um, band across it, which prevents impulses from reaching the ventricle. So the impulse can spread to both atria, but not the ventricles. Now, this is a great thing because atria will not contract at the same time with the ventricles. So it's atrial systole, and then there's ventricle systole afterwards. They both do not contract at the same time. Now, the only way um, the the wave of excitations or the electrical impulses can spread is via the atrial ventricular node. So the electrical impulses pass through the AV node, which is found between the two atria. Okay, it's maybe it's more in the middle here, but never mind. Right, the atrial ventricular node is there and it kind of acts as a relay station because there is a time delay of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 seconds, which is actually the length of the atrial systole okay so 0 0.1 seconds just nice and this allows the atria to empty completely into the ventricles then the atrial ventricular node sends a wave of excitation to the ventricles but this is not like straightforward right it's actually passed to this middle middle nerves first so it doesn't pass the side first Past just the middle the middle parts here at the septum. This is called a septum of the heart. And this nervous tissue is called the bundle of his. Whoops, bundle of his. And then it spreads, right? The impulse spreads upwards from the base of the heart to the side, the walls of the ventricle via the procaine tissue. These are all procaine tissue. And the reason for this is that the blood will then be pushed from the bottom up. So the ventricular, ventricular systole actually occurs from the base up. And it's kind of like you pushing toothpaste out of a tube, right? You're gonna, if you're logical and sane, you're gonna be pushing it from the bottom right to the top making sure all the toothpaste is squeezed out of the tube right so the heart is pretty much the same thing the base is where the contraction starts and this helps empty the ventricles more effectively 
Now, what are kind of tissue? Again, there are tiny bundles of connecting fibers found at the base of the ventricles. And the electrical impulses spread upwards in the ventricle falls as a result. And you can see a little diagram here showing what happens. Now, right after this happens and all the, inner, all the electrical impulses are sent through the prokine tissue, there is a period called a refractory period, a period of insensitivity to any stimulation. And this is where diastole occurs. This takes around 0 0.4 seconds or so. And in this, in, this, uh, in this situation, there is no electrical impulses traveling in any of those nervous tissues until after 0 0.4 seconds, the sinoatrial node initiates the first wave of excitation again and goes through the pathway again, and then the cardiac cycle kind of repeats itself. Yay, done. So sinoatrial node, then the AV node, the atrial ventricle node, slight delay, the bundle of his, and then the prokine tissue from the base upwards, and then you have refractory period. Now, if you were to chart the electrical impulses in your heart, you will get the electrocardiography, an electrocardiogram called ECG. Now, this ECG is really looking at the electrical impulses that are sent in those nerves. And you can see here, there's a P wave, a QRS complex and a T wave. And these are not random letters. These letters are set. So it's always going to be P, Q, R, S, T. The P wave occurs when there is a um, contraction of the atria. QRS um, happens when there's contraction of the ventricles during ventricle systole. And T is diastole. It's a recovery wave. So yeah, you can see here how the normal heartbeat looks like. Now, of course, this happens a lot in Korean dramas. If the character dies, it's going to flatline. If it's fast, however, you can see the frequency of these increases. If it's slow, these peaks are going to be wider apart. And therefore, um, by looking at the graph and you know the x-axis if they give you, you can actually calculate the heartbeat based on the graph and tell how many beats per minute does the person have, um, whether it's irregular or regular based on these peaks right here. Let's try an example. So how do we find how long one cardiac cycle is based on this electrocardiogram? So again, we have the P, P wave, the QRS complex, and the T wave, right? Um, and what's going on here? We can see the graph here, the axis is time. And by drawing where the cardiac cycle starts and ends, we can, we can figure out you know, um, how long it is. So very easy, we can just get one, just find where it starts and ends. So there's a little mountain, huge peak, and another little mountain. We can see one cardiac cycle and the pattern kind of repeats itself. So as long as we find one cycle, we can Read the, read the measurement, this is 0 0.8 seconds, uh, and we can then figure out how many beats occurs per minute. So if one cardiac cycle takes 0 0.8 seconds, then how many times is it happening per minute? So take one minute divided by 0 0.8 seconds, that is 60 seconds divided by 0 0.8 seconds, and you have 75. 75 beats per minute is the average for a human being. And that is how you calculate beats per minute via an electrocardiogram. And we are done with chapter 8. I hope you kind of learned something. This is a little um, summary of the graphs we have learned so far. We have the, card, the pressures in the heart. We have the ventricle volume. We have the electrocardiogram right here lined up with the with the uh, cardiac cycle graph, as well as the phonocardiogram, which is what measures the sound. And this sound again is is really determined by AV valve closing, which is the, it's the first sound. The semilunar valve closing causes the second sound. So that's it for the cardiac cycle. I hope you learned something in the video.
I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.